And we begin with this. A new policy impacting our border is now in effect this morning. The program provides a channel for secure legal migration for Ukrainians who have a U.S. sponsor and pass security checks. Thanks so much for joining us at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour. So under the new program, the sponsors for Ukrainian refugees will also need to declare financial support for those families. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live at a very San Ysidro, a very busy area there in San Ysidro. And you just talked to a volunteer. Yes, good morning, Eric and Netta. We got some recent information sharing with us that this Pedwest port of entry was supposed to close last night at midnight, but what we're showing you right now is very different. An active area where people are coming through, they share with us that this has been extended for the next six hours that about 190 Ukrainian refugees are still in Mexico waiting to be processed. That's why they're getting this group through and they needed to extend this a little bit longer. Now this is information again coming from a volunteer with contact on people on the other side across the border. We're also being told that after today, anybody that comes to Tijuana uh, will be sent back to Mexico City in order to start that program and the sponsorship. Now, um, here's a here's a soundbite from that man sharing with us why he thinks that people are going to make it across. But uh, she said that it's pretty empty right now. She showed me pictures. She was walking around videos and it's uh, most of the people that are that are here are here and uh, they're just waiting to be, you know, vetted and now, moving forward beyond this morning, according to the Department of Homeland Security, refugees who will enter the U.S.-Mexico border will be turned away and pointed to the program website. Now, the Biden administration is launching this to allow U.S. citizens and groups to financially sponsor Ukrainian refugees so they can come to the U.S. sooner. It's designed to discourage them from traveling to Mexico to seek entry. Now, once the sponsorship program opens for applications later this month, sponsors will need to file affidavits of financial support and undergo background checks. DHS will then determine whether they qualify to be sponsors. Now, if granted under this program, Ukrainians will have parole, allowing them to bypass the visa and refugee program, allowing them to live and work in the U.S. for about two years. Now, that same volunteer shared with us that he thinks this is a much better way of making sure Ukrainians get into the United States. He said that uh, a sponsor doesn't necessarily mean they're living with them, but just helping them financially, helping them with the papers, making sure that they're able to be here uh, in the United States. Now, uh, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Eric. I, um, you know, it, it's a busy morning here. Yeah, I was just going to say there's a lot of people coming across the border as we speak. We're seeing that behind you. So what's the next step for the people that are uh, coming across the border, those folks that are behind you? Where do they go now? Yeah, Eric, well, this has been pretty much the scene for about a month now where they cross the border, then many humanitarian groups intercept them, quickly get them an Uber, get them a ride to the airport. Many of them do have plans already when they get here into the United States. Either they're going to a local church, maybe family across the United States, but it's very uh, a quick process. They're grabbing some food. I mean, we just saw a family with five little kids rush over, grab a donut this morning, uh, you know, just with the bags on their back. That's what they're here with. So the next step has really been making sure they get to their next destination. Yeah, we're rolling out the welcome mat there, aren't we? All right, Dana Marie McNichol reporting live for us. Absolutely. Thank you, Dana Marie. This morning, top American officials promising to help Ukraine win its fight against Russia. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin just met face to face with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. They said the U.S. will provide more than $300 million in foreign military financing, and the U.S. has approved a $165 million sale of ammunition for Ukraine's war efforts. Secretary Blinken says so far Russia is failing in its war. Russia has sought as its principal aim to totally subjugate Ukraine, to take away its sovereignty, to take away its independence. That has failed. This week, the head of the United Nations will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow and then with President Zelensky in Ukraine. This morning, the San Diego Union superintendent is opening up about some controversial comments. Dr. Cheryl James Ward is on administrative leave over remarks during a diversity, equity and inclusion meeting. CBS 8's Chris Crow, live outside district headquarters now in Encinitas, there with more on what she has to say about all this, Chris. 
Good morning, Eric. And Dr. Cheryl James Ward believes that those comments were actually taken out of context. And the reason why she is saying that is she's actually pointing to a tweet that went out sharing what she believes, again, to be comments taken out of context right before that community outrage. Take a listen. And the tweet said Dr. Ward is woke. Um, she has, uh, uh, she believes that Asian kids do well in school because their families are rich and don't work. I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. But those two pieces together sent a message to the community. And for me, they were intentionally sent together um, to do something and to, to, to get the reaction that we have gotten to get just that. Now to get you caught up here, Dr. Cheryl James Ward was placed on administrative leave for comments that she made about Asian students and their families at a recent district meeting. Now, in this interview, Dr. James Ward touched on a number of topics relating to this outrage, the controversy and those comments that she made. But th for the first time, we are now hearing that she believes that if she is fired, that she will indeed take legal action. That is one of the headlines coming out of this interview. Not Dr. James Ward also, again, as you heard, claims that those comments were taken out of context. But she also, again, uh, says that she is concerned that this controversy is overshadowing the work that needs to be done in, San in San Diego schools. Now, an interim superintendent was appointed by the school board to lead the district during Dr. Cheryl Ward's administrative leave. We still don't know what will happen moving forward. That is a part of this story that we're continuing to follow. But again, another uh, keynote coming here out of this sit down interview is that if, uh, Dr. Cheryl Ward, uh, James Ward has said that if she is indeed fired, she is considering her legal options. Now, of course, for more on this sit down interview and this story and the continuing reaction to it, you can go to our website, cbs8.com and click on that story link. Eric Netta. Chris Crow, we appreciate you staying on top of that for us. Today, the San Diego City Council hosting a special meeting to vote on regulating the sale of flavored tobacco products. This morning, the council will be voting on what's called the Stop Adolescent Addiction to Flavored E-Cigarettes Act. Right now, one in four San Diego high school students uses e-cigarettes. The vote today is a move towards getting flavored tobacco products off of shelves. The council is scheduled to meet at 11 a.m. This morning, several people are hurt, including two children after a multi-car crash in Encinitas. This all started with a chase involving California Highway Patrol yesterday morning. Officers tried to pull over a car for speeding and driving erratically on the 5. The car got off at Encinitas Boulevard, ran a red light at Via Cantabria, tried to make an illegal turn, and then hit two other cars. A mother and her young kids were in one of those cars, that family. The woman in the other car and the passengers in the suspect's car were all taken to the hospital. The 19-year-old driver is under arrest, suspected of DUI. San Diego's historic Presidio is safe this morning after a close call with a brush fire. It started just before 5 yesterday afternoon off Taylor Street. Firefighters were able to knock down the fire in 30 minutes and stop the spread at about a half an acre. Authorities are on alert amid these hot weather conditions. You know, it's warm. Uh, hopefully it's not uh, not a precursor of what our uh, season holds, but uh, we know that we haven't had a lot of rain. Uh, fuel is dry, and so this is certainly something, unfortunately, I think we're going to come to expect. Well, the Presidio, we can tell you, was not damaged in this fire. The historic fort, as you know, was established back in 1769 and was the first permanent European settlement on the Pacific coast. And another brush fire, this one in Balboa Park, started around 4 p.m. near Juniper Road and 8th Avenue. And because of these hot, dry conditions, again, extra crews were called out to this. Firefighters had the flames also knocked down in a half hour, and they contained that damage to also a half an acre. So the fire crews are on high alert. They're on and able it. to knock these mm -hmm. things down quick, but uh, we all got to be vigilant here today. Right, right. We don't want to see any sparks. No small sparks on a Santa Ana day, especially. Uh, taking a look right now at our coastline. How gorgeous is this? We have pretty mild conditions to start things off. Not too breezy at this point. Uh, we're not seeing those palm trees swaying back and forth, but it is going to be a fairly dry, windy day in the mountains and the foothills. So right here, San Miguel's view. This is where the camera's sitting at the top of San Miguel, looking all the way to our coastline.
it is a fairly clear start, so the sun will be quite quick to warm you up this morning. Here's a look right now downtown. We just dropped a couple degrees just ahead of that sunrise time. In fact, right now would be our sunrise. It's 54 degrees for downtown San Diego at 610 this morning. 38 degree dew points. Humidity is at 55%. That's for downtown. It's a lot drier the more inland you go. 54 in El Cajon right now. 50 in Poway. 42 in Ramona. So right now is the coolest time of the day. Just as the sun comes up, our temperatures tend to drop a degree or two. And then we are just going up, up, up from here. So looking at 24 hours ago, temperatures were cooler this morning. We're now 2 to 9 degrees warmer at this hour. So looking at the dew points, this measures the moisture. We don't have much at all in Mount Laguna. So that's bone dry. 13 degree dew point in Julian. 20 in Ramona. 24 in Escondido. So obviously the east winds are here. The offshore winds dry us out, take all the moisture out of the air, but they're not too strong. Sail Hill just 16 mile per hour winds, 9 in Julian. That's kind of all we're dealing with. We'll see possibly 25 mile per hour gusts throughout the next few hours. Again, continuously coming in from the deserts. So sunshine and warm weather. Today's the hottest day of the week, getting all the way to 83 degrees by 2 o'clock this afternoon. That's for downtown San Diego. Inland, you're in for it. 90 in Escondido, 91 in El Cajon, 87 in Ramona, 88 in Poway, 87 in Miramar. So upper 80s, low 90s for most inland spots, even at the coast, will be hovering right around the low 80s for most of you. A check of traffic here, and overall, no major incidents to report. So that's always a good thing. Uh, we don't have any crashes at this time, at least not showing up on the CHP cameras. Any of our major freeways are looking pretty smooth. The Coronado Bridge, slight backup, which is pretty typical at this hour as people are heading over to the base. Looking at your drive time, so this is pretty good. On the 5 going southbound, if you're going from Oceanside to Encinitas, it'll only take you 12 minutes. Now, if you're going from San Ysidro to the 94 on the 805, it'll take you 15 minutes. And then the 52 westbound, if you're headed from the 125 to the 15, there's your drive time right there. Just seven minutes, so speeds are pretty normal.